Yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. We have a very special guest on today. We've got Sebastian van der Lance, who's the founder of WordProof. And he's actually been around the EOS, you can probably see him right now, yeah. He's been around the EOS community a fair bit doing interviews at the moment because their project's very, very exciting, what they're moving forward. And we've got some very new, interesting things to talk about, as well as going into WordProof and WordPress as well. We've got stuff like EOS time stamping, work proposals, all that kind of great stuff. But I'll let um, Sebastian introduce himself. He's that way, I think. Um, but how are you, sir? How's, how's the Netherlands? Summer's coming, right? It's sunny here in Amsterdam, and we just discussed we're really close to each other, so we will meet soon. It's a 30 minute flight, so, but all, everything is fine here, man. Well, the Netherlands is a good place, bro. There's a lot of, there's a lot of fun stuff happening there, so I can definitely make a trip. <laughs> we're a good, comp okay, good company. We have Effect.ai as a neighbor here in Amsterdam. We have the Bytes Network. It's another EOSIO project. We have the MPT token. I haven't met guys yet, but we're in good company with the EOS, uh, EOS Amsterdam, working a lot with the guys. I uh, love them. It really, it really is a hub. Amsterdam. Well, the Netherlands in general, like they're so forward thinking on what they're, you know, with their policies, with just general cryptocurrency, they're, they're, open, they're opening the doors to it. So, you know, it's potentially somewhere I could move for a long time into the future, but let's, let's, let's get into that. Like, you know, so what's your background? How long have you been in Netherlands for? Like, what have you done before you started WordProof? How did you get into blockchain? Uh, I've, I'm an open source nerd. I was part of the, I'm part of the WordPress community. WordPress is the number one content management solution in the world, empowering 33.4% of the web, more than one third since April. And I was, yeah, I founded one of the first WordPress agencies in the Netherlands. I guess we were number two or number three. That was, wow. uh, I started my agency in 2006. Uh, we went all in on WordPress in 2008. When I started uh, with the WordPress, as a, uh, we did WordPress, we, uh, the agencies around me, they said, hey, what are you doing? You're killing the market with your free software. What are you going to do? <laughs> uh, so we started as a really a rebel company and uh, yeah, into open source since then and uh, we did a active role in the community organized the word camps that are the events organized the wordpress meetups at our office um yeah that that's what i did last king's day that was a few days ago was exactly the celebration of 12 and a half year of my wordpress agency called funnels uh, yeah and since two months i work full-time on word proof um, i say we'll get into that in a second yeah well yeah, so you, you're, yeah, you, you come from the, the open source community, like you said, yeah, you built your own business. Like you said, you know, you've, you've, kind of, you've done all the hard graft and now you're trying to like revolutionize the whole WordPress industry. Because WordPress is like you said on another interview, it's like 35% of the whole internet is built on WordPress. And you, you're doing the open source version with WordProof. Well, WordPress is open source, but WordProof is like the blockchain version. And this is the really exciting thing. Like um, just, uh, just for anyone who doesn't know quickly, What's the, what is the power of it? What does it do? How is it going to revolutionize the, the web? And obviously, how's, you know, what's, what's moving on for the future with WordProof? As Brandon Bloomer said, the current internet or, or the web as we know it is fundamentally insecure. And especially in WordPress, we power tens of millions of websites. Security is a big thing because it's open source software. It works with a lot of open source plugins. Uh, people need to update it, but because the entrance, level of entry is, is, is so easy to get started with WordPress, uh, because of that, we're responsible as WordPress for the most shitty websites on the internet as well. Because we're too big, or because we're so big, we mm. are responsible for the biggest amount of bad websites on the web. <clears throat> yep. And what WordProof aims to do is bringing uh, WordPress as an interface to uh, the blockchain, but the other way around, we start the other way around. We bring the benefits of blockchain like security to WordPress. And yeah, we start with simple time stamping to make sure to prove the authority of the content you make. Uh, but eventually we want to eliminate the security risks from WordPress. Mm. And let's talk about that because the, the EOS time stamping is the first thing I've got here. And this is a big deal. Like EOS Writer, uh, you said a few, it was EOS Writer. We had uh, everything EOS. Their content is now being stamped on the EOS blockchain. And like, you, you, let's talk about that because that's a massive deal because it means that the website is now as secure as the blockchain. And like elaborate on that. It's, it's so cool, man. In a way, the, the website is not uh, as secure as the blockchain yet. Uh, okay. But the, the first step, the first product is a plugin 
to timestamp your content on uh, the blockchain, on the EOS blockchain, on the Jungle Mainnet, you can do it, and on the Talos blockchain. And you can choose it, we're EOS IO chain agnostic. And what it does, it, it puts a hash of the title and the content into the blockchain, and from the options panel, you can choose if you want to put the content itself in the blockchain as well. A next step, will be to work with VRAM or TIPFS to put the whole content in the blockchain and read the content in the front end from the blockchain. Uh, so WordPress will then Whoa. just interface <laughs> to, uh, the, to the EOS IO blockchain where every interaction is signed. So um, when you put a cut between the dashboard of WordPress where you create the content and the, the way you search it from or the, where the visitor goes, uh, and every interaction is with smart contracts, then you've closed, uh, the, yeah, th then you've created a secure ecosystem. It's, so, so, it's such a big deal because like, um, we, we, so we, at the moment you can't actually like use, and so this is like moving a little bit further on, right, with the EOS name service. So if you yeah. integrate the EOS name service with then the, the proof of the blockchain of using word proof instead of WordPress, that means you could basically have, you could, you could go on a website and your the, the front end will be the website, but the back end will be the blockchain. And that's Absolutely. like, it's crazy. That's like, what, do, what do you think about that? Do you think that's going to have like, obviously it's going to be positive, but what do you think the implications of this are if you can't have, if, if, you, if people start ownership, having ownership of their websites instead of the DNS or whatever it was? No, uh, the, the results will be, it, it will take five years before we have a um, decentralized internet, which is as big as the normal internet. And it will take 10 years to put the centralized internet down. That's a ballpoint, um, ballpoint figure. There, in, that new, uh, in that new era, there will be a CMS, which is the number one on the decentralized web. And everything we do is ensuring that WordPress will be the CMS of the decentralized web too. We totally come in peace. We want to have the WordPress founders and for example, we want to have them on board. We, we want to collaborate with them uh, as it will bring society towards a more open source, more transparent, more in, in yeah, how do you say integrity, more integer uh, society. Yeah. And WordPress is an amazing movement. There's a lot of entrepreneurship. There's a lot of everything there. And, what we want to do is onboarding those tens of thousands of WordPress developers. Yeah, we, we want to blow their minds with the tools <laughs> to bring their WordPress awesomeness to the world. It's, it's honestly, it's super exciting, bro. And like, um, like you were saying about, well, like, let's, 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 let's bring it back a notch as well. Cause like we were talking, we were talking earlier about how like the way block one has built EOS, right? It's open source. They built the EOS protocol, the, the hardware code, but then um, where the, the blockchain company is its own entity and it run, then it will build applications on top of uh, EOS, right? So yeah. WordPress is the same concept where WordPress is, a, what's, what's the company called? The WordPress company. Yeah, I, I, I should explain what it is. You have WordPress.com and you have WordPress.org. WordPress.org is uh, the open source software. You can download it and there's a whole plugin ecosystem. WordPress.com is a software as a service company utilizing the wordpress.org software but you can have maxadapt.wordpress.com and for a little premium you can buy, buy a domain and for another premium you can buy a team and a whole ecosystem there that company is called automatic and it's founded by wordpress founder matt millenbein um and, and there is yeah go on go on yeah there, there's a balance so uh in a recent interview matt said for every dollar uh being earned at automatic there's 20 to 21 dollar being earned at the wordpress ecosystem whoa and then his next sentence was for every dollar being earned on facebook 99 cents is for facebook so that's not an ecosystem it's not an ecosystem is it yeah that, so that was about the balance between uh earning money and open source um yeah it, it was great how he stated that yeah, yeah, it, it puts into perspective how like the the, cent the centralized aspect of a company is its it Achilles' heel eventually because you can't onboard. We we need to have uh, centralization for leadership in a way. It's good that Block One exists, but they don't need exactly. to be too important. It's good that Automatic exists, but they don't need to be too important. 
Automatic is one of the biggest contributor to the WordPress core. But the number two is a Dutch company. It's called Yoast. They make the most popular SEO plugin, search engine optimization. And um, I talked to them. They have around 10 people working full time on the WordPress core software. Wow. So just 10 Did people working. Live? Then his answer, uh, the answer of Yoast Falk will be uh, the, the way to grow the Yoast company is to let WordPress grow. So he's really, he's really a great visionary. And, it's awesome, uh, yeah. And what, what will happen, that's a recent announcement, because most open source companies, and then uh, Dan tweeted that recently, or Brandon, uh, yeah, one of the two, or they both they retweeted it, that mm. open source is really bad at marketing. Yeah. So for commercial players in open source ecosystem, it's easy for them to do their marketing better than the open source software itself. And, exactly, um, yeah. And we learned a lot the last 10, 11 years in the WordPress ecosystem. And what will happen now, because Yoast is really, it, it's one of the most successful companies in the WordPress ecosystem in the plugin space. The founder of Yoast will be chief marketing for the, the open source WordPress project. So it's massive to see what will happen there. Mm. It's, it's so much potential. Next week, so I will ask him about his vision. <laughs> how we will do that, but that's really it, groundbreaking. Right? WordPress is one of the textbook examples of how a community plus open source software could be a market leader or is a market leader at the mm. moment. So as a blockchain world, I think we can learn a lot from uh, how that is going. And we should, I'm following it, uh, yeah. Every, every day, day, yeah. Because that, that model, right, so you, you got that idea from that model through WordPress, but it, the same thing happened in gaming as well. Because like, say, say GTA, Grand Theft Auto, right? They had the, the central core developers which built the game, but then they open sourced the map creation. And then the game oh. is like, yeah, so right, so the maps are made by everybody and then they can sell them on a market. And, yeah. and then it just makes the game exponentially better because there's more people who are building on top of it. But just, just to wing this back to word proof, because yeah. you're doing the same model, right? So you're building the word proof open source core software and then you're going to have your own company where, which will build on top of the word proof Exactly, and I want, um, now I'm working, I'm working on a way to fund the company because we will, I've decided we will work with a team of three or four. We will work full time on this for at least a year to make every tools that are necessary to make this transition. Uh, but that needs to be funded. And my first idea of funding it was getting donations. <laughs> my investors laughed at me, they say, what? I never heard the word donation in a business conversation. But um, for me, this word proof thing is the way to secure the whole WordPress industry to stay relevant forever in the decentralized web too. That's my ground fest. There are, that's where I start. It's a so huge, yeah, it's, it's a not huge about thing. It, it's not about uh, Sebastian van der Lans having the biggest company in the world. I don't mind about that, and it's, that's true. I, I really don't care. The next, of course, I'm a commercial guy, but what I've learned in the WordPress ecosystem, I organized a lot of events. We made a GDPR plugin, maybe we talk about that later. But we'll talk about it in a minute, uh, yeah. I give away, I, I give, I give, I give, and it returns in every value you give away comes back to you. But it's really always value first, value first. That's why I'm really open in every interview. I. I share my knowledge, I share the things we know, and from there, it always, there, there's always value coming back in open source. We do this yeah. for 12 and a half years, and uh, it's always like that. Yeah. Always it's, indirect, it's, but, but always, it always happens. Yeah, yeah, it's, you know, any model you look at, right? If it's like a proprietary holding onto your assets and using like, you know, competition, saying we're not gonna give you anything. It, we'll it, slow it down. Yeah, it limits the business because it limits you to your own little world. But if you're open source, it means, you know, if they, if they make, say, let's go back to the gaming analogy, right? If you make a map on, on GTA and, and then that will make GTA better for you as well as them, then they can sell it. It's like this it's wonderful little, but then, carry on. What do you want to say? No, want we, could, we, we could talk for ages, me and you. We love it. <laughs> I, I want to tune in on what you said because it, it blew my mind. I, I was on holiday a few weeks ago. A holiday for me is research time. And uh, I saw the video with Ben and Tal from Liquid Apps. And uh, they said, they were talking about, hey, if you want to use the non-fungible tokens, 
to uh, exchange the swords and stuff like that in games, then it's okay. It's cool in a way, but it's nothing more than, than cool. It's only valuable when the process to get that sword is transparent as well. A, a sword uh, which you can get without being able to verify if the logic is right about how somebody gets that sword isn't as valuable as a sword that you can get by a business logic that's transparent. Mm. And that's where they are building the tools for to make not only the NFT transparent or transferable, but also to prove that there are really just thousands of them. There are, uh, there's only one process to get them and the person's having the sport. It's provable that they had to do the pain, the hours, the, the luck or whatever's necessary to get that. And that's what we want to bring to the WordPress ecosystem as well. Block one did a publication about the passwordless future with signing everything. I'm not sure if you read it. Yeah, but yeah. It will bring those whole layer of integrity, only publish when you sign, only install plugin when you sign, uh, with one or two keys, how you did it. We will bring those whole layer of security to the WordPress ecosystem without uh, hurting. Trustless validation. Yeah, it's exactly. And the default now is you install WordPress, you don't do updates if you don't know or don't care, and then you will get hacked in uh, two or three years. And the default should be, okay, we have a layer of integrity on blockchain. If you do nothing, you're safe. It's crazy. Yeah, no, I, I, it's like, it, you're blowing my mind, brother. <laughs> it's like this, this, what you're working on now is such a massive deal, but that, so that was kind of covering, like, we just went on a bit of a rant there, but let's, let, let's break it down into the, the new things that you want to kind of announce to the community. So we've got, I've got three things. You can just tackle them whenever you want. So we went through EOS timestamping. We kind of get yeah. that with time with, with EOS writers being timestamped and everything EOS. We're, we're on that, but we're on that path. Yeah. What do you what do you think about the EOS worker proposal? Because you were telling me some awesome stuff a second ago. I won't even try and recite it. I'll leave it to you because it's it's a very because like at the moment we're struggling to um, to know where we want to put these funds. You know, a lot of people yeah. are saying burn it. We don't know. Like you know, I I even like, no one knows. So we want to just have like a discussion about what do you think? What do you think? Where should we put the money? Um, I don't have a. A hard opinion about uh, where where we should put the the EOS money, but I have an opinion about the process because okay. work proposal is it's announced by Dan Larimer. He had the ideas about it, and what we did, Wordproof initially is funded by a worker proposal on the Telos blockchain, and um, what they did, they made a really pragmatic, uh, yeah, first version of the worker proposal. What is the worker proposal in a few sentences? Uh, I want to develop, for example, I need 25K. Uh, I need five months to do it. And um, so I do a work proposal and I request 5K in five months, five cycles. And every month, or, and then the token holders can vote. Do we want to give Sebastian 5K this month? Okay, the next month, do, uh, did he deliver on his first milestone? Yes, okay, we sign yes, and he gets the next fifth, uh, 5K. And it's a really a way to uh, keep me accountable as a builder. And what, there, there's a great shift going on. My, my thing with open source is the software in open source is really inclusive. What's the proposition of WordPress and almost every open source software? The best software available for everyone. But when you look at the production of open source software, writing good code takes a lot of time. And um, in that way, I'm able, when I, when I run my WordPress agency, I'm not too much able to, I need volume before I'm able to contribute to the ecosystem. So um, I have to have the pain of running a WordPress agency. It was fun, it is fun. Uh, before I can contribute a lot to open source software. The last two years, we contributed about 60, 70 K in dollars for in open source software at my agency for us. But the production of open source software is not inclusive at all. It's for the elite who are financially free in a way. And a system like a worker proposal can flip that coin. I don't have to run an agency for 10 or 11 or 12 years having uh, 25 developers. I'm very proud of my team, of course, but 
it took a long time before I was there, and now I can contribute to open source. A system like a worker proposal could flip this. Everyone with a great idea and some credibility, because you're a nice guy or whatever, um, can get the trust from a worker proposal. And that makes open source inclusive for everyone willing to work open source, or, uh, production of open source, inclusive for everyone who wants to produce it. So uh, yeah, yeah, we were one the first uh, the first one on Telos, yeah, working with the work because why didn't EOS implement it? Because it's really um, it's tricky. A will can say, oh, I put in a work proposal and uh, we vote for ourselves and then we get the money out. So I fully understand why they didn't do it yet. On Telos, they kept the wheels uh, with 40K. Some say that's great, others say it's not good, but for distribution at first sight, it's okay. And because the market cap is smaller, it's less receivable for fraud. And that's why they were able to set up uh, a first version of it. And I think, that's the role of those different chains to learn from each other. Mm. If block one cracks identity, then that, that will make a worker proposal system much more fraud free. So what I think the inflation for 4% is way too high. Let's make it one or less because the block producers, they get one. And I think mm. they're maybe equally important, mm. but let's not burn those funds because yeah, once yeah. We have the identity cracked, uh, we can make a fair process with embedding the learnings from, for example, tables. Uh, yeah, it's a learning process. It's a massive, it, what, you, what you've just said is probably the best answer to why we should use the worker proposal fund because what you're saying is, is right, open source is always better, but you have to be an elite to be working on open source because you don't get paid yeah. to do open source, right? So if you can actually have a system which, in, which pays for people to do open source in the first place, then it's yeah. going to create a system which is fundamentally better at its core and people get rewarded for it. So yeah. this is the first good, like this is the first time I've heard a good proposition for why we should actually be putting a worker proposal to work instead of burning it. Because at the end of the day, it's like, you know, burning it's great for the token holders long term, right? But it's not yeah. good for building. With money builds things, right? At the end of the day, yeah. value builds stuff. So I think your that was a great, a great um, answer, mate. I really think that was a really yeah. good answer. It's, it could be a good nugget. And what I did is uh, I wrote an article. It's kind of a vision thing, but it's called How to Fund Your Dreams. And it's about, it's literally, I described from A to Z the whole worker proposal process from day to day, how I did it, how much time I spend on the worker proposal writing, what time I spend on doing the marketing, things like that. So it's really a blueprint for everyone willing to, yeah, wanting to have their products funded. If you need 1K, if you need 5K, if you need 10K, it's easy if you have a great idea. So uh, I will send you that article so you can put it down. We'll put it in the description. Yeah, no, awesome. That's, um, we might even touch on that again because I think that's a really good topic. But now let's move on to something slightly different, which you haven't mentioned as well. Um, GDPR. So right, GDPR is a massive deal. You know, there's people in the space who say, well, GDPR is irrelevant now. That's what I say. You know, I believe that blockchains kind of making GDPR relevant because you own your data in the first place. So why do you need GDPR? And you've got a great, well, you've got a team, you're building a team. We won't go into the team too much because you don't want to speak about that. But let's talk about the GDPR compliance plugin you've got. You think it's like, I don't know if, should I say this, a million downloads or something? What's, what's, yeah, what's the... exactly four days ago, or depending on the day we broadcast, uh, we had our 1 millionth downloads and we have more than 100K active users. So it's, wow. it's a massive plugin. We were one of the first, GDPR is a headache in Europe for a lot of people. And from the 25th of May, uh, 2018, last year, everyone, every website owner was, yeah, it, it was mandatory to be GDPR compliant. And which is hard for them because they have to invest thousands of dollars, uh, not for progress, but just to be compliant. So our people, mm. everybody, every entrepreneur in the in the, the Europe was complaining and saying, "Oh, I hate GDPR." And then, and that was exactly the moment that, yeah, that was in 2017. That was the moment that we thought, okay, we want to do an open source contribution. My team, we did a lot with events and speakers at events, things like that. But I wanted to do an open source contribution. Then Jeffrey is the, the managing director of the Fanon's company. He said, "Why don't we make?" 
uh, people don't want to pay for GDPR. We have to make GDPR uh, with the customers we have anyway. So why not open source that tools? It will, it, it's a great thing because people don't want to pay. Okay, let's make that they don't have to pay. Uh, so the timing was right. We did it, we executed it really well. Um, and yeah, because we're not a plugging funnels, the agency is not a plugging company, but it's a service agency. So we have a passion for service. That's why we said, okay, no business model around the GDPR. We just make the best tooling and it will, it will come back to us anyway. And then we had 10K downloads after three weeks, 50K after uh, two months and yeah, ended up to 100K. That's massive. It's a massive deal. And like what you're saying about to bring it back, you know, like GDPR is there to protect people, right? But in protecting people, it makes people not want to do business. So it's like stifling yeah. growth in the economy. So it's like, if we can get rid of the whole thing in the first place, it means no one, there's no need for GDPR. Everybody can be compliant because you don't give anyone's data away. And then you're gonna get an exponential amount of more businesses coming into the ecosystem. So where do you think that's set? Where do you think that's gonna align? Like that's gonna put WordProof in a great position, right? Nah, uh, yeah. <laughs> let's, let's put it back into WordProof. Yeah, uh, there's a lot to do about GDPR. Um, in, a, in a way, what it did, let's, let's stick with GDPR and we come back to where the GDPR in my, my, if I have to really break it down is first, the, every individual was responsible for their own privacy. What did the GDPR law in a way it made entrepreneurs and organizations responsible, more responsible for the privacy of the individual because the government says the individual, yeah, they, they are not able to protect their privacy. They don't know what it is. And uh, so we make the organizations responsible. So mm -hmm. in a way, I think that's great. That's one of the, the reasons we decided to open source it. Number one, people didn't want to pay for it. So, uh, so it makes us popular. And number two, uh, yeah, in a way, I, I think it's a good story to make organizations more responsible for the privacy of the individual. No, yeah, I, I'm, I love, listening to you speak about this is just your own point about everything. It's just, it's, insp it's inspiring, bro. <laughs> like the, <laughs> okay, then let, let's make a, a, a hard line in the middle. We have two camps on GDPR and blockchain. Camp number one says information in the blockchain is permanent. So it's a no-go. It's totally impossible to combine it. Blockchain, GDPR, absolutely no-go. Then we have the other camp, and it says GD blockchain is the only way to execute GDPR. For example, when you buy something, um, when you buy something in a web shop, you have 90 days to return it. And um, in a way, if you look at the, the user base in a web shop, the list with their customers, ideally it's just a sum up of all the consents, all the buyers who said, okay, for 90 days, you have access to all my information. And uh, ideally there, there is no database in the web shop, but just it's a list of the consents of people giving permission. And what I can do, I buy a product, uh, it's okay to, to yeah, to, I can return it for 90 days. So it's in my benefit that the shop has my information for 90 days. Mm. Otherwise, we can't do the return. Exactly. But if I use it after 10 or 20 days, um, I, uh, and I, I use it, I'm not able to send it back. Okay, let's cut off the consent. And from then, I'm not in their database anymore. Wow, yeah. This is uh, the future of GDPR. And you have WordPress, the number, yeah, the, the biggest e-commerce plugin powering 39% of all the web shops on the web is WooCommerce. Mm. And um, when we make a plugin for WooCommerce to do this GDPR thing, it's kind of a, a next step for the, the, the GDPR plugin we have now. What it will do, it's hard. It's, it's a lot of steps before we are there. But when we are there, every buyer in a in a in a web shop could have an eosio account oh, 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 oh. now we're talking <laughs> now we're talking man <laughs> this is amazing so, so you have two camps and i'm not saying one is wrong or one is right let let me okay i will choose 
I will choose that the people saying GDPR is the uh, blockchain is the only way to enable GDPR. I'm more of that side. It takes time before we are there, but GDP, blockchain is the way to do GDPR right. Exactly. Yeah, that's what, that's what I say. And like the thing you're saying with the, the customers. So you go to a shop, you buy something, you don't want it three weeks later, so you return it, but they've still got all your information. And then they yeah. can tailor adverts to you, they can take your email address. So it's such a big deal, dude. It's, it's honestly massive. And then, you, and then you're winging it around to saying, you know, if everyone has an EOS account with this, this is like, oh, what's the, like, what's the onboarding time? Do you, like, how long do you think it would take for the, the internet to transition towards this kind of technology? Uh, I it's hope probably... we get fast because my strategy is to make really pragmatic small tools. For example, the timestamping. Um, I have onboarded some people in the WordProof group on Telegram, t.me slash WordProof. Sorry for shilling it already. But, uh, <laughs> and we made a tester group. Uh, we opened the testing yesterday. Uh, we had 30 people already in it, but you're still able to uh, say, hey, I want to test it. And a lot of those people were... WordPress users not familiar with blockchain and um, for them there's kind of a learning a steep learning thing that was what I thought because they have to uh, create a, a USAO account they have to um, install a wallet and then they can timestamp I made a video of 10 minutes walking you through every step and mo more most of them they got it up and running in less than 15 minutes. Wow. They created an EOSIO account, which you can do from the plugin. We have, uh, you can do it with EOS name service. That's an EOS account that you have to pay the, what is it, $1. And we have another option to create a free Telos account. So you, without, any, without spending any dime, you can get started. But the, the people, they succeed without having any blockchain knowledge in timestamping in about 15 minutes. Yeah, my mind was blowing. It's literally one of those blow moments. It's like, you know, if you go back a year or two ago, people would have no idea, maybe not a year or two, maybe a little bit longer, but people have no idea that, you know, people just learning about what a blockchain is, let alone like having their private keys. Going yeah. from where we are today, where it's like a one click and you can have two accounts on Telos and EOS, which then can timestamp. It's like, how fast is that growing? It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's ridiculous, isn't it? We, we can go fast and with GDPR, we had the benefit that it was forced by law. What Brandon Bloomer says in his interview or in one of his presentations in 2017, he said, in five years from now, if you don't timestamp your articles or your, your content, you're gonna be considered a fraud. So it will be good when it's, uh, yeah. Because we have the tool of timestamping, it could be time for governments to say, okay, you should timestamp at least your privacy uh, stuff. You should timestamp at least your terms and conditions. So um, let's see what happens there. When that happens, the, the <coughs> government won't enforce it because there's no cheap way to do it. You can't go to a notary every time you change your terms and conditions because that's, that's not, it's, it's, you're not able to do so. But with WordProof, with the WordProof timestamping plugin, you're able to do it and you're able to do it for free. So yeah, probably if, if, the, yeah, if the government see this video, mm. they will enforce uh, timestamping. It's going to push it through so quick. And like I always say, like, you know, the internet's been around for, it took 20 years to get massive. Like today, everybody uses the internet. It's like 75% of companies use the internet now. But yeah. I always say, because we've got the internet now, it's like much easier to communicate, right? It's like really, it's like exponentially easier to communicate with people around the world. So for something like now the blockchain with this timestamping to then actually creep into, like you said, governments using it to validate their, because think about this as well. This is really interesting, right? So, there's, there's AI coming out now, which is as good um, as listening to your voice once and then it can, you can then type in the AI, you can type out whatever you want to say and it will sound exactly like that person, right? So imagine yeah. how dangerous that could be into the future. Yeah, yeah, it could be really dangerous. Like take Donald Trump, you, you could make yeah. a, that speech of Donald Trump saying, launch the nuclear bomb or whatever, like, you could say anything you wanted. Um, then they were saying like, this is going to be real risky because you can't validate if that's them or not. Yeah. Like Brendan Bloomer said, everything's going to be a fraud if you're not on the blockchain. So it's really, really, it could be actually like almost like a, 
a security, like a homeland security or a national risk if you don't yeah. have things on the blockchain. So it might be it might be compulsory in two, three years, less. Exactly, and fake news or whatever, making every source of every content trackable, it really makes sense, especially in this era. It's crazy, man. Like um, even uh, news is fake news. You see, it's just like, oh my god. Like, it, yeah. and then social media. Like, where do you think it's going to lead? With it's such a broad topic, isn't it? There's so many things this can go into. GDPR is big. Uh, fake news is big. All topics are big. But and and that's what we want to do. In my tester group, I have now 30 people playing around with the plugin since yesterday, and they come up with IDs way better than where we come up with. So. That's what I want to do for the coming year. We will make the tools. Um, for example, WordPress doesn't say, hey, you have to make a blog, you have to make a web shop. No, we provide the tools and work with it and come up with better ideas than we as developers can come up with anyway. Mm. It's, it's like, what, basically what I think, what you're, <laughs> what you're building is literally, you're, you're on the edge of like a massive, massive can of worms. Like, cause, and this can affect anything from news to like websites being hosted by individuals. It's like we could have to talk. We'd have to talk for another five hours on this, bro. We, we nah. can keep going, keep going. First of all, we work with the biggest publishers, the biggest publishers in the Netherlands. Who, for example, Pers Group. That's one of the biggest. We build one of their most important strategic websites. It's all WordPress. So uh, I, we didn't talk about it because I want to my tester squad who knows blockchain. I want them to be happy with the result first. And halfway June or at the end of June, there's the biggest WordPress conference in the world. It's called WordCamp Europe. There we will, yeah, the week in advance, we will launch the plugin. And then when it's good, great enough, when it's uh, we're ready to launch product. Then we will have it in the WordPress uh, repository. We will have it, um, yeah, and we will ask them, hey, do you want to have this layer of integrity under every website? It's a huge, and like, um, the thing I like about it as well is you've got like, you've got a road to getting into a massive user base. Like think about a yeah. lot of the dApps you see today. It's difficult because the, their users aren't the real people who are gonna actually know, the know-how of having to get an account, all that kind of stuff. But with WordPress people, right? They know yeah. this game. This is their, their guy. Those guys, they know their way around a computer, right? So all it's going to take is a few clicks. You've got the right contacts. And before you know it, you can see millions and millions of sites using the EOS blockchain to validate their, their, their websites. It's just exactly. like, yeah. dude, you are, you're going after a big space. I'm super excited, man. That's the plan, man. And um, for example, the, the thing, the timestamping, it will be a free plugin. And that helped us a lot with the GDPR. Uh, plugin as well. I think the proof of integrity, proof of authenticity, it's a human right. It's not, couldn't be for the elite. That's why we said, okay, it must be free. And that's why we're happy to offer the free accounts at this moment. Uh, it's accessible to everyone. It's and of course, deal. we can make premium things and tokens and blah, blah, blah later. Integrity timestamps will be free. Mm. I think, <laughs> how long have we been going for anyway? We've done about, probably about 45 minutes to an hour. I think okay. we've done, but no, it's like, um, it's been great having you on, Seb. Anyway, like, is there anything else you want to add? So like, um, how can we get hold of you, Telegram, contact, and like, what's coming up, which you can, like, we can get involved to help out with? Uh, I need a lot of people from the WordPress community or people using WordPress. Are you a WordPress user? Are you a developer? Whatever, I need you as a tester of the product. So join the t.me slash wordproof and I'll provide you. Yeah, it's in the link below. Uh, I have an installation video, 10 minutes. I have the plugin for you. We have uh, since today, we hired a community manager who will work on the project. He's really familiar with WordPress. He worked with blockchain for years. Uh, so the team is two from today and the team will be four soon. Woohoo! Yeah. So excited. I'm excited for this one. Like, um, you know, That's it's great. Great. Uh, one hour ago we, we did the agreement and uh, yeah, we, we get this train running, man. <laughs> Dude, it's great having you on. Cause like, um, you're such an expert in your field. Like I don't think people realize how knowledgeable you are. You've built your own business for 12 years. You've been there, you've done it. Now you're building the next iteration of the WordPress. It's like, it's an absolute pleasure having you on, man. Cause you can sit here and you can just watch you and just learn a whole whole field of stuff. Like before I met you, I didn't really even know anything about WordPress. 
and it's and a huge industry. The thing with WordPress is in the WordPress ecosystem, a lot of businesses are working together in a really friendly way, open source. And in a way, it's in their harmony. In there are other, other open source communities where there's no harmony at all. And there's often politics and stuff. Then, it's called a collaboration. Exactly. And collab, yeah, there are a lot of beautiful words for it. Then you have blockchain putting a financial, as Brandon Bloomer said, financial ring fence around open source. But that could mess up the, the harmony in a way because there's finance. But the way it works here with the block producers, it's so sm smartly designed. Two years ago, I sent you that a few weeks ago when we, when we were calling. Uh, I wrote an article, seven reasons why USIO is the WordPress of the blockchains. Some will say that's an offending title, but uh, the community, how it works, there are a lot of similarities. And WordPress started that 10 years ago. So a lot of learnings in community building from the WordPress uh, community can directly be used in uh, the USAO ecosystem. And the other way around, a lot of people in the WordPress ecosystem, they have a hard time uh, earning enough money and things like that. It's, it's a big, a large ecosystem, but a lot of people struggle too to make their business around it. So there's a lot of commercial and integrity and stuff we can get from the USAO community to WordPress. So the WordProof movement is about bringing the movements together the great WordPress ecosystem and the great EOSAO ecosystem. Yeah. It's about the best of both worlds. And we are facilitating the people working together. I know, and maybe block one, because I don't really know, right? But maybe block one knew that model, because that, obviously they did know that model, right? But I don't, I don't think many people know the WordPress model, because it's quite like behind the scenes. You know, I don't really know many people who know that. So block one and EOS, if it's similar to that model, it's an already working amazing model. You're going to have block one, like Dan Larimer said, he's going to eat his own dog food. He's going to build the core, the core protocol of EOS. Then you're going to yeah. be building an application on top of it. And then everyone else can get involved as well because it's open source. So everyone else can build as well. So it's like, dude, this is such a big deal. This is a great, it's great having you on, man. And, and that's my story. That's what I will tell at the WordPress conference in Europe. There, uh, without, it's really inclusive. The WordPress, the mission of WordPress is democratized publishing. Since years, that's their mission. So uh, power to the people, everyone the best tools. And with the EOSIO software, I don't have to tell you, but that's what I tell there. Hey, first we democratize uh, publishing with WordPress. We as WordPress are textbook example. Next step is uh, Bitcoin, for example. So. Um, in, in the UK and the US, we don't have a problem uh, for what Bitcoin is a solution. Venezuela, hyper uh, inflation, uh, the Bitcoin is one of the ways to have, in a way, store of value. So from democratized publishing, we go to democratized finance. But then with the EOSIO software, we could democratize everything in the world. Rebuilding Uber without them taking 30% going out of the ecosystem but the, the, the uh, driver gets 15% more paid, paid more, 15%, while the person writing is paying 15% less. We could redesign business. And yeah, it's, all, yeah. All, your, <laughs> all your followers know this, but um, <laughs> that would be my story at the conference. Democratize uh, publishing, democratize finance, democratize fucking everything <laughs> dude and the way you put it it's like um you know us in the eos community we understand this right eos io and blockchain technology can disintermediate middlemen out of businesses but actually when you go in the real world not many people know that like people really don't understand it so if you can you're perfect that's, example that's why I, I i spoke at alma a lot of wordpress conference in the netherlands because i really love that community and i i needed to do great tryouts for the big show because I think there are 1,500 people in the room when I do the keynote in uh, WordPress Europe or WordCamp Europe. So um, the WordPress people, the tens of thousands of developers, they have a great competitive advantage because they already know and feel and live open source. So I hope to get them enthusiastic to start doing things with blockchain. First timestamp, but number two, I want those developers to play around with uh, the EOS IO software 
and that's why we, for example, the Everything Eels guys, they make uh, they made a, a course which will be published today or tomorrow. And in the WordProof backend, what we have is uh, one tab with general settings. The second tab is uh, create your EOS account. The third tab is create your free Telos account. But the fourth tab is learn blockchain development. And there you have access to the Everything EOS course for free. So we will, on, the mission is to onboard those thousands, tens of thousands of developers. Mm. And, uh, and yeah, they, they Dude, you, you're nailing it on the head. Yeah, you may, you're nailing it. I think, um, like open source is just the future. Like, like I said, with the gaming thing, open source works better in gaming and people in the gaming community understand that as well. They know that open source is better. Then you're looking at things like the internet, WordPress, 35% of, in, you know, websites are built on WordPress. They understand open source as well. And then you've got these open source, massive blockchains, public blockchains coming to the, in the future, there's not really going to be any play. Well, there's going to, like you said, there's going to be a centralized aspect of things for marketing because marketing's always done better with centralization. Yeah. Obviously a few other things, maybe like planning ahead and like doing source code, but open source is half the picture. It's going to be like yeah. maybe 75% open source, 25% is going to be a centralized system and it's going to benefit everybody so much more. But you've just like, we've done an hour now. You've just completely, it's been the absolute pleasure having an set, honestly. Like, whatever you're on again, you just do, you do a great job. And, like, you, you explain it well. If you can go and do all these conferences and explain that to people, I can't really see this being a failure, dude. <laughs> this is going to be a massive uh, thing. Man, I, I hope to, uh, I hope, yeah. For example, if you're a developer willing to develop anything, blockchain-related, WordPress-related, go check the worker proposals because it can get you started. There's no reason not to do it. And what I want to do, I want to bring inspiration, the, the right things from the WordPress community to the EOSAO community, as I will bring things from the blockchain community, from the EOSAO community to the WordPress ecosystem. And I hope to connect some dots there. It's not mm. about me, it's about getting the nuggets of, yeah, the nuggets, the inspiration, and cross them over. I hope that, yeah, maybe we're not necessary anymore uh, in a few years. I hope to do so because the world will be a better place if those two connect. Yeah. And let, that, that's a hundred percent. Let's just recap what we went through. So guys, EOS worker proposal, there is a really good solution in this video. <laughs> You've got EOS time stamping. We spoke about GDPR, WordPress, WordProof, and just your general background, man. Your background sounds awesome. And like, um, I think we'll wrap it up there, man. Really good to have you on. Like I always say, like, subscribe, hit the bell. If you want to keep getting this content, you know, if the more you share this kind of content, the more people are going to find out about this great project WordProof. So do that, hit the like button, do that great stuff, post it on Twitter, and our lovely faces will be all over the crypto sphere and especially EOS. Um, but yeah, guys, is there, um, yeah, thanks there for coming on. Awesome, man. You're very welcome. I will do the article about how to fund your dreams. It has uh, the blueprint for the whole work proposal we did on Telos. It has uh, a great description of the whole WordPress ecosystem, how it's funded, what kind of uh, parties are there. And number two, if you want to test the WordProof plugin, if you have WordPress, if you're a user, a developer, head out and go to t.me slash WordProof uh, because, yeah, we want to onboard you as a tester. We're looking forward to every valuable feedback that is there. So we can, before halfway June, launch the perfect first version of uh, WordProof. You're very welcome to uh, be a part of the tester squad. So uh, <laughs> reach out to us. Do it, guys. Get in contact with this guy. It's that way, isn't it? He is going to, I think, honestly, I think you're going to change the world. But yeah, thanks so much, man. Thanks for watching the video, guys. You love, you love the things you do on your channel. And uh, let's make this world a better place all together. 100%, brother. All right, guys. Have a good day. I'll see you later. Bye.